Hello, everyone, and welcome to Unit 7. I know that it is always easier to be invested in a class like this one in the beginning. As a class winds down, I find it more difficult to stay motivated. So let me just encourage you to finish strong. If you are behind in some of the material from earlier units, that's okay. It's better to be in the game and do some than to stop entirely because you can't do anything. I know that that has been a temptation for me as classes tend to wind down. Once again, focus on the videos for the big picture. You can scan the readings and go in more depth over time. And most important, I think, is that you continue to meet with your Haruta partner, a relationship that perhaps could become a long-term friendship. So let me just encourage you that you are doing great, and we are just about finished with our course. Okay, let's jump into Unit 7. In our Spiritual Practices track, we continue walking through the Siddur. Unit 6, I posted a video walking through the blessings of the Amidah. Now Dave takes us through Takhanun, Halal, and concluding prayers. The Halal source sheet that Dave posted is a great resource of musical renditions of the Halal Psalms. In our Jewish Basics topic, we are moving into Jewish life cycle events. I apologize that I was not able to upload the Jewish text video from last unit, so I will plan to post that here as well. Next, we continue with a second unit on Musar. In Unit 6, we introduce the concept of Musar. Here, we want to give you some practice with it. We have some light material on four different midot, humility, trust, generosity, and patience. After listening to the videos, we'd like you to choose just one midah out of the four midot to practice intentionally for this unit. Midah is singular and midot is plural. I'll discuss that activity in a moment when we look at our Messianic Jewish lab. In our Messianic Jewish Nuts and Bolts section, we have been looking at the history of the early Messianic Jewish community in Acts and the first four centuries. In Unit 6, we opened up the Great Divide, the development of Rabbinic Judaism on one side and Historic Church on the other, and the Great Schism that happened. We looked at supersessionism, the idea that the Church has replaced the Jewish people as the new people of God. We looked at supersessionism from a historical perspective, looking at the sources themselves. In Unit 7, we will unpack supersessionism from a theological perspective, leading us to the twofold community of Messiah. This class will be in session, uh, or if taking the class after the fact, you'll find the recording here. As preparation for this class, I have a short video on the first chapter of Ephesians, just to help us to start thinking about this study in new ways. This is an example of how our lens shifts when we understand how Paul originally viewed the body of Messiah from a post-supersessionistic view. Moving now into our Messianic Jewish lab, first take a prayerful stroll through the weekday takhanun and concluding prayers in the Koran Siddur. If you're able to keep up with these prayer strolls in the Siddur, you'll have a great understanding of the Jewish service. Next we have the new readings for the daily Devar. And then if you have one activity that you do this unit, focus on the Musar activity. Like I said a moment ago, choose one of the four midot discussed in the videos and make it a daily focus for Unit 7. Humility, trust, generosity, and patience. First, take a look in our basic reading box below. We have posted the chapter from Alan Marinus's book, Everyday Holiness, for each of these midot. Just read the chapter on the midah that you have chosen to focus on. Second, open up this practice document here and choose a practice related to your midah that you can work on over the course of the unit. Let's take a closer look at this document. Okay, in this document called Musar Practice Ideas, we have each of the four midot that we have the readings for and the videos on, and some practices that you can take on as part of your Musar work. In the first column, there are these practice options, and then in the second column are focus phrases, things, uh, quotes and things that you can use to help you focus on this particular uh, midah. The idea is that we take a period of time, a week or two, to be intentional about the midah 
the character heart quality that we are working on cultivating in our life. And we, we study it. We read texts about it. We um, read articles and uh, different quotes and then take on some practices in our lives to help us work on and practice these qualities in daily life. Then we take time in the evenings to reflect on our progress and how we're doing and what might be some of the impediments and uh, things that can help us succeed. For our Midah of Humility, you'll see our first practice option. When you encounter someone you disagree with, don't let on until you have asked them at least three questions about why they believe as they do. This might be something particularly helpful to do during this season that we're in today. Uh, second, every person should have two pockets. In one pocket should be a piece of paper saying, I'm only dust and ashes. When one is feeling too proud, reach into this pocket and take out this piece of paper and read it. On the other pocket should be a piece of paper saying, for my sake was the world created. When one is feeling disheartened and lowly, reach into this pocket and take this paper out and read it. So get two pieces of paper and try this. Third, as part of Cheshbon HaNefesh, uh, reflecting on the soul, think about times during your day when you defended yourself to others or took pains to make yourself look better. Uh, think and meditate on why you felt you had to do that. Was it really necessary? And then there's a link here to a, an article uh, with some additional ideas and things to try. Now if we move down to generosity, if you regularly walk in a place where there are people who ask for money in the city or something like that, intentionally bring a few $1 bills with you each time to give out. And when you donate, look people in the eye and give a kind word if you can. Uh, I encourage you to pray for people as well if that's something that you feel comfortable doing. Second, the next time you are asked for something, Bring that into your cheshbon hanefesh, into your prayerful reflection. How did you respond? If you decline to be generous, why? Be honest with yourself about your motivations, where there were fears motivating the decision. Did it bring up any areas where you can grow in trusting God more? And there's another article here for some additional ideas. As we move into trust, uh, spend time in contemplation of the fact that where you are right now is exactly where you are supposed to be. Everything is exactly as God has said it. The challenges in front of you are for your purification and learning to help you become more who God would have you be. They are opportunities to draw close to God. The good things that will happen tomorrow or happened yesterday, they don't exist in this moment that you're carving out for yourself. All that exists is right now. You are being sustained by God in this very moment and you have everything that you need. Focus on the present and try to find a deep joy in releasing any care for what will happen tomorrow. Even just five minutes of this time and journal about it and see what that was like. Try to do this regularly. Uh, Dave makes a note here, don't do this while driving. <laughs> and for patience, is there one time of day or one situation where you don't like the way that you react? Maybe it's during your commute, getting the kids ready for bed. Maybe it's a meeting at work or a conversation with a difficult person. For this week, make a commitment about how you will behave during that situation, even if it's only half an hour. For example, Mentally prepare yourself beforehand, decide ahead of time to take one full breath before responding to be intentional, or commit to not raising your voice for the duration of the conversation. Uh, write down the results and continue to study as you think and pray about these things. Are there times when you regularly get heated or angry? Uh, the next time this happens, replay the event in your mind. Can you notice anything about yourself as it is happening? Try to be an observer. Try to identify signals in your body and mind that indicate that anger and impatience are about to come out, to release. Uh, and can you begin to recognize these indicators ahead of time? Does your face get hot or do you breathe more heavily? Um, if you can see it happening earlier, you have a chance to take a breath and a short circuit that response. I will also add that often anger is a signpost that something else is wrong. So take a look at your anger and say, what is wrong 
And is it something that I have control over? Is it something that someone else has done? And how might I solve this problem without using anger as part of the solution? So try to select one midah that seems most relevant to you in your life right now. And then keep a journal of your progress and share with your Havruta. Over to our Havruta box, continue to meet, check in with each other and encourage one another. Pray for areas you are both struggling with. Uh, the source sheet for this week is on patience, so take some time with each other to go through this together. Also, discuss whether you'd like to continue meeting after the course is complete and what that might look like. Dave and I have been talking about launching a Musar group where we can study these kinds of things together, cycling through each midah on a rotating basis. Uh, so let us know if that's something that you're interested in. I'll pick up with the readings in the next video, and as always, keep us posted on your progress. Let us know if you have any questions or feedback, what we're doing well, what we can do to make this course even better the next time around, and happy learning, everyone.